is a kind of a funny one actually. Um, this is courtesy of BBC News. It says Rita Ora venue keep venue to keep license after admitting lockdown breach. If you remember at the big, be- no, say the beginning. Well, some few a few weeks ago, Rita Ora was caught celebrating her birthday party in a local restaurant bar where she lives, um, and you know some uh, Snoopy snitchy Carlton esque, not Carlton. Uh, what was his name? Randall. Yeah, Randall esque. Um, Tattletale decided to take some very clear iPhone pictures of Rita Ora and her team going into a uh, very dark restaurant and then we learned later on that they'd kind of sealed up the, the windows and made sure no one could peer inside and then the story came out that they'd basically paid the manager off that was basically hired there in order for Rita Ora to celebrate her birthday because as you've known through lockdown celebrities just must celebrate their birthday at all exp- like I guess I guess I can't blame them because if you're a celebrity or a public figure, you're coming to always generate content, right? Content you have to generate in order to kind of keep people engaged, keep people interested because that's event- that's essentially paying your bills. You are selling yourself, right? Without you, nothing moves. Cool, safe. So the easiest thing to win it with is like stuff that happens just to you, right? Stuff you don't have to go and do. And one of the things that you can kind of squeeze until the cows come home or squeeze completely dry is your birthday, right? Pregnancies, engagements, breakups, because they're things that are just happening, right? They just come, they kind of organically sprout out from you. But birthdays are unique because they happen every year for as long as you're alive. And even if you're not alive, people keep celebrating your birthday anyway. So it's a, it's an easy win. So I understand the, the need to constantly celebrate your birthday. But it's just interesting for Risa because Risa Ora, if you're not familiar, especially in the UK, she has such a terrible reputation. Every time, again, I'm, I don't follow nothing about her career. I met her once in in person and she was really really nice this was um when i went to new york when i went to new york to the first time i ever went to new york i think it might have been 2017 or something like that oh 2007 sorry and i went to meet her in person when you used to have that website her in we hanged out and then i met those girls the couple that did the brand called i think it's silver spoon it was like a leather brand right leather kind of a uh, fashion brand that was based from New York. Um, I think there might have been two Jewish people. I'm not sure what they were. But anyway, there, there were a couple, like a man and a woman. And then they were basically styling uh, Risa Ora at that time. And I think she must have been happened to be in New York. I'm going to say hey, New York. It might not have been London. But wherever it was, I met her along with those two. Um, and she was very nice, very pleasant. And again, the reason why I say that is because usually, in the, especially in London, I'm not sure how it is in other places, but in London more so, the people who are kind of, you know, you're deemed to be public figures or celebrities are usually quite up their own asses. It's not, it's not bad, but it just is the nature of the beast, isn't it? And I guess maybe because we're a smaller island, um, the, who, whoever is a celebrity in this country, you're most likely going to know them. It's unlikely you don't know any of these people. Even if you don't consume their content, you're going to be coming across with them. So my, that might feed into their ego. I don't really know what it is, but I've had a lot of, I've heard a lot of people had some very bad experiences with people with in terms of celebrities. So it can go a bit left. And because I'm just a regular guy, I don't have anything to offer the girl, right? I, I'm not a record, I'm not a record A and R, a record label A and R. I don't have my own brand. I'm just a dude, right? The fact that she went out of a way to be extra nice was like, oh, okay, cool. So I always kind of kept that memory in my head. But then obviously over the years, she's done many things in public that people haven't been a fan of. Again, not been really paying attention. But the funny thing is, like, I think we have this thing called, um, was it, is it the Master Singer? Something, anyway. We have one of those flipping crappy shows where somebody sings and, you know, you, the, the judges turn their back and they dramatically turn around and be like, oh, it's a human. You know that bullshit, right? And she's one of the judges on this show, right? The Master Singer. I think it's called the, the Faceless. Faceless or Masters? One of these, one of these names. And every weekend that that show's on, she's trending because people just hate her opinions on music. They hate that she's on their panel, I'm assuming, at first, because she hasn't really had the most successful music career you'd imagine. Even though I'd say the fact that she's not working a normal job is still a success. I think people always kind of get it misconstrued. Music in, To make it music is so difficult. Any entertainment industry, any entertainment artistic endeavor, it's just very hard to make it. So to have the ability to pay your bills doing that thing, even if it means you're doing it in dinner halls and you're having to play private gigs or whatever it doesn't really matter the fact that you're paying your bills in music is very difficult and the fact that you're doing it and not working a normal job is something to be heralded but i guess if you're just an average day everyday everyday fan you're like thinking hold on how can she be judging people on the stage when she hasn't sold this amount of records hasn't had a number one in ages blah 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 but she always gets loads of really horrible horrible um 
you know, uh, tweets coming her way over the weekend. So when she then went ahead and broke the COVID or the lockdown um, rules, it was like, oh, come on, Rita, man. You're just kicking yourself in the nuts here. Um, and then, um, of course, when it transpired that, you know, she paid off the manager and then that manager ended up getting fired. It was like, God almighty. And then another story came out that the venue might lose their license. You're like, Jesus Christ. If ever there was a way to really punch yourself in the nuts, this was it. So this is courtesy of BBC News, but it says the venue get to keep their license. So it's some um, actual good PR for Rita for once. It says a restaurant that broke lockdown rules to host Rita Ora's 30th birthday will now not have its license revoked. The pop star team offered the manager Casa of Casa Cruz in Notting Hill five grand Grand to allow guests to attend her party on the 20th of November during the second coronavirus lockdown, police said. Clinton and Chelsea Council said it will be suspend the venue's license for six weeks. The venue said it was grateful for the council's careful consideration. The restaurant's director, Nick Fellows, we look forward to serving our its customers and community as soon as preempted to reopen. Rita Ora's previously appointed for the party. Now, I'm still thinking to myself, right? Why was there a need to go to a restaurant in your area that she most probably was popping into the weeks prior to it to organize and you know sort out how much of a bribe she's going to pay the manager why not just hire or book an airbnb someone leave someone else's name get a private chef to go and fully cater the thing no social media and just go and enjoy yourself there i didn't actually see the she could have easily flew under the radar doing it that way don't you think so as opposed to just you know booking a restaurant in your area again I'm not for breaking lockdown rules, but if you're fully insistent on, you know, because these people do exist, these flipping, um, you know, especially women. Women have a thing with birthdays that I just, you know, I, we will as men, we will never understand. I think as myself, as being a non-birthday celebrator, I will never really get. But women really love their birthdays, right? Birthday month, birthday week, you know, birthday, whatever, quarter. It's flipping insane. If that's the case, you don't want to be disturbed. Just go and, you know, rent an amazing uh mansion somewhere in the middle of the countryside you know bust your friends over a couple of weeks prior to cover yourselves whatever it may be or get them to kind of lock down remotely i don't know whatever you may do but there's ways to do it if you have the means that would be far that that would basically you could basically make that five grand stretch that you paid that manager a lot more than doing whatever all this shit was and imagine it getting sacked as well so how much is that five grand worth especially in a lockdown right you're working a job imagine you're a restaurant manager of yeah of any restaurant during lockdown you're not working so you're probably not getting paid i don't know how it is in most restaurants but imagine hmm, maybe i'm not sure maybe some restaurants managers get salaried i'm not sure but i know for sure staff don't you work by the hour but let's imagine you are getting worked by the hour let's imagine you're salaried either way you're not making that much so you're not making that much. You're not sure if you're going to get your next month's paycheck. Every, every month's are like up in the air. You get offered five grand. You're like, fuck it, cool, let's take it. Then you get fired. So that five grand now is like two grand because you're having to spec it out for, you know, however many months you can f ahead of time to make sure you have um, enough money to kind of pay your bills to keep roof over your head. It's just not worth it. I really don't understand anything about this story in that regard, especially from, more so from Rita Ora's side and the other side as well from the manager of the actual bar itself. It says, yeah, Rita Ora, um, 30 year old Rita Ora flew to Egypt to a private performance on 21st. So she not only did the party before, uh, after, which we all are aware of, she also flew to Egypt prior on return to Fallen Day. She, she should have to say for two weeks. So she obviously broke her quarantine to go and do her birthday, which was, you know, epic. She could have just celebrated her birthday in Egypt and no one would have known, right? Um, it's, it, it, of course she didn't take any pictures no one would have done either but it, it continues instead she threw a birthday party in London which violated lockdown rules and prevented household mixing indoors um, it says Miss Aura has said that she deserved criticism for her actions and would donate her fee from the court to from the concert to charity the general manager Casa Cruz uh, Scotty Batari told police that he was contacted by the representative of Miss Aura the other day and offered 50,000 to off 5,000 okay to open a venue in a statement police Batari said that he accepted the offer because he was greedy and fully aware that the event breached the regulation so what is he oh he's the general manager <clears throat> okay that's worse general managers like you're managing other locations you're not only the managing you're not only like the door opener or the keyholder sorry of that particular restaurant so that is definitely something that he probably shouldn't have done he also confirmed that he did not receive the five thousand that was offered so not only did Rita Ora get this man fired offer him a, a bribe in you know that obviously led to his firing she didn't even give him the money in the first place and this idea that she's going to give the money to charity, let's see. Um, Mr. Batari, is that his name? Mr. Ba Bat Batahari. Batahari, Batatari, Batarari, Batatari, 
Batatarai, however you pronounce that, said the beginning, he said he he began admitting guests at about seven, between 15 and 20 people were at the venue at its peak at nine. The venue was found to have breached licensing rules by not following police into the premises. Batatarai also suggested criminal uh, investigations while four particles were issued with fines at the time. So only four people got um, fines. I guess they were probably part of Rita Ora's team that stayed around. Everyone else got told to go basically leave. The council's licensing committee said the breach was extremely serious as it has hampered the policy's ability to investigate the incident. And look at the venues. Oh, look at it. There's like BMW 1 Series. Is that 1 Series or ZX? I'm not sure what it was that one. You know what I mean? Like, God, man. In order to keep its license and operate, Mr. Casta Cruz uh, banned Batari from the premises to provide extra safeguards to ensure CTV operational. The venue also has implemented a noise dispersal and external management plan to agree to meet local residents to at least twice a year to discuss the operation of the premises. Mr. Fallows said the restaurant would have comply with additional um, conditions on the premises. Casta Cruz will keep its license until the venue has had a chance to appeal against the committee decision. Jesus Christ, man. And if you know one thing about um, the UK, it's very rare that restaurants get their license taken away from them. If it's a club, this one got taken away ages ago. But restaurants in the UK, especially in London, we love a good restaurant. Clubs, nightclubs and stuff and bars get fucked. But restaurants, oof. So yeah, big up Rita Aura. Good press, mate. Good press.